was in college. I went to Michigan State University up in Lansing, Michigan. And it was my freshman year, and I went up on a Thursday night to have dinner, and I couldn't get the fork to my mouth. What Marilyn Daner didn't know at the time was that she had a condition called essential tremor disorder. For more than 40 years, she's lived with the tremors. Recently, they've been getting worse. A neurologist referred Marilyn to the St. Louis University Movement Disorders Clinic to be evaluated for deep brain stimulation surgery. All surgery candidates are videotaped. Can you hold both your hands outstretched in front of you like that? And open your fingers? Very good. A panel of experts then review the videotapes and decide the best candidates for surgery. Can you draw a vertical line down, down that page? That's oh, probably harder. <laughs> I know, just try. For Marilyn, drawing a straight line or drinking a glass of water have been a struggle for decades and recently have been getting worse. The symptoms of the patients that we choose for surgery are very profound and very disabling. So we are becoming more aggressive thinking about doing surgery in patients who are uh, younger, who have perhaps not been exposed to as much in the way of medication, because we think that we can actually help those patients as much as we are helping the refractory patients currently. That many of these patients have probably reached the end of the road with medical treatment, and we are looking for something more. Uh, and that's where it really becomes effective. From the minute they said it, it wasn't anything where I said, I'm not going to do it, or oh, it's going to be too hard, or it's going to be this, or it was just immediately, okay, let's do it. The DBS process involves medical evaluation and selection, imaging and target planning for DBS, placement of the electrode, placement of the generator, and programming of the generator. This video will detail the process. The day of the surgery to transform her quality of life has arrived and Marilyn is clearly excited. Dr. Richard Buholz has become a national expert in these surgeries, developing much of the equipment used for the procedure. The technologies necessary to place these uh, devices uh, was pioneered and invented here at St. Louis University. Uh, one of the things that is common between all, all centers doing deep brain stimulation is the use of something called the stealth station. This is called an image guided surgical system or a navigational system. And what this allows you to do is insert these electrodes into the brain with a high degree of precision. First, the patient is mildly sedated and a series of five fiducial screws are placed into the scola's registration points to help doctors find their target deep within the brain. In essential tremor, the target is a structure called the thalamus. So this is the thalamus here. Essentially, what we do in deep brain simulation for tremor is to guide an electrode uh, from the surface of the brain by a series of calculations into the thalamus. What we do is actually have a technique of image fusion where we take our intraoperative images, fuse those to the preoperative images using the outline in the skull, and then we can actually depict where the electrode is in the brain tissue with a greater than a one millimeter degree of pr precision. Then the team from the neurosurgeon to the neurologist and device consultant examine the images to decide the best surgical path avoiding arteries and veins. So what's the distance? 23.17? <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Chan. So why don't we go ahead and then, uh, set that as a target. Okay, and there's our preliminary path. Now the true surgical process begins. The giant round O-arm device works as an in-operating room CT providing 3D images. Dr. Buholz chooses the entry point, the shortest distance to the stimulation target. The patient's head is secured and she is sedated as surgeons open up a dime-sized hole in the skull. I think we're just about ready to align. A tower-like device is then attached to the head, which will align the path. Marilyn is getting an electrode on the left side to control tremors on the right side. The 3D image is a roadmap. So now uh, we have aligned our, our 
device with that surgical plan so that we know exactly as we introduce the electrode how we will be transversing going through the brain and uh, that will allow us to start the recording session here in just a moment. The, the target in the thalamus is about two and a half, three millimeters in size. So we've introduced the, the needle, so we put that in sequentially and at the very last moment introduce the very tiny part of the lead. That should now be 10 millimeters above our target. Doctors first place the recording electrode into the brain. By turning that knob, uh, I can remotely drive that electrode down into the brain. And as I'm going down into the brain, I'm recording all the way down and trying to capture the area, the most representative area. Doctors record brain waves as the electrode gets closer to the target within the brain. All the while, the patient is awake. Okay, put your hands up. Can I squeeze my hand? Now open in my hand. Dr. Chand listens closely to the brain waves. The rhythmic, pulsing sound tells them they are close to the target. I think I'd be willing to, to, to put a place a uh, stimulating electrode at this point and see, okay. see what we get. The anticipation builds in the OR as doctors place the stimulating electrode and slowly turn on the current to begin testing. So we see some benefit at one already. The tremor is stopping. You feel the tremor stop now? Very good, very good. The patient is awake to measure her response as they continue increasing levels of current. Her response is stunning. Hold your right hand up for me. Open your fingers. It's pretty good. It's, uh, your hand has become very steady now. All right. To be certain they have it right, doctors double check the setting of the current. So we are switching the lead off. We'll see the tremor come back. Then they turn it back on. Uh, hold it there, hold it there. We're turning the battery on, so you should see the tremor stop. Feel a little tingling? Yeah. You can feel the satisfaction of the St. Louis University Hospital team. This patient will have relief from decades of tremors. The stimulating electrode is then coiled and secured under the scalp and the wound is closed. The doctor gives her family the good news. I got a great effect uh, when we tr uh, put the stimulator in uh, and tried it in the operating room. The tremor went away at a very low voltage, so that looked really great and things. She came through it just like a champ. And because we were videotaping the surgery, we showed this footage to the patient's daughter. It's just unbelievable that you do that for her. It's going to totally change your life. So today we will put the generator in and we will make a few incisions to, uh, to connect it. The lead that we placed in was on the left side, however the patient would like to have the generator on the right side. So we'll make a couple of incisions in order to get the leads from the generator up to the uh, lead uh, in her brain and make all the connections. Okay, let's go. How are we doing, gang? Now the neurosurgeon and the surgical team will implant a generator in the chest wall of the patient that will stimulate the electrode in the brain to work 24 hours a day. This relatively simple surgery takes place two weeks after the initial lead placement, and the patient is put under general anesthesia. It's going to go here, here, and then over here. Okay. Why don't we do like this? This team has done this surgery many times. Right now, St. Louis University Hospital does deep brain stimulation surgeries on the average of one to two times per week, and the number is steadily rising. The FDA-approved indications for DBS include essential tremor, Parkinson's disease, dystonia, obsessive-compulsive disorder, other treatments being studied are major depression and epilepsy. The medical team works quickly to first pull the lead from under the scalp and then open the battery pack and test it before placement in a pocket under the chest wall. One more time with the generator. This is the lead going in. Nicely done, keep the tension on. The entire surgery has taken about two hours. Went perfectly well. That we were able to get the generator in there without any difficulty. The, there was all the leads were working, which is that important thing. You never quite know until you actually hook up the generator to make certain that all the leads are working on the electrode. Dr. Buholz finds these surgeries intensely gratifying in their ability to impact lives, but they are not without risk. About two percent of the time, bleeding in the brain can occur. 
but that risk is diminished because of improved imaging techniques. As with all surgery, there is risk of infection. Rarely complications can arise with the actual leads. I can't believe it. I can't even picture it. It's just so foreign to me to think of not having a tremor. Today's the day Marilyn Daner and her family return to the Movement Disorders Clinic to witness modern medicine at its finest as doctors program the generator and turn on the electrode. First, Dr. Chand takes a measurement of the tremor. This is a baseline. You see the tremor is of high amplitude in the right arm. The neurologist takes Marilyn through a series of motor tests before turning the electrode on. Well, I would never grab it with this hand. Do you want me to? I want you to do it with <laughs> your right hand, okay? Okay. Just try to bring it to your mouth. Okay. I can't. <laughs> For 40 years, Marilyn Daner has not been able to drink a glass of water, draw a straight line, or sign her name with her right hand. The frequency of 180, high frequency stimulation for tremor. So there are four electrodes sitting in your brain. You're going to interrogate each one. So you oh, started okay. with the electrode that is sitting lowermost. It's trial and error to find the combination of electrodes giving the patient the most relief without side effects. So we will try the last combination, which will be zero minus three plus. The entire electrode will be active. And yeah, uh, that's pretty good. All right, there we go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that's really amazing. There is always the acid test, the glass of water. <laughs> so <laughs> let's try that. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Looks like you're not going to spill anything from that glass. Let's try that. Oh, <laughs> my God. Dr. Chan then asked Marilyn to write a simple sentence. My tremors are better. That says it all. I've not written since college with it by itself. Today, Marilyn's life really changed. It's a very good day. Again, it's a very good day. The programming period will continue gradually for about three to four months here at the Movement Disorders Clinic. We don't want to send her on a very high current uh, and then she gets side effects. Uh, so the process of programming is small amounts of current and build up. For Marilyn Daner, her new life with DBS will be different. She will need to avoid metal detectors like at the airport. All DBS patients get a card to show the TSA. Each patient gets a remote and can turn off the battery if needed. Most batteries have a finite life of five years, meaning after five years, another relatively simple surgery. There are also rechargeable batteries the patient recharges on their own, which have a life of about nine years. For Marilyn, without question, the process has been positive. She looks forward to a new chapter without tremors. Being able to do yard work again and not just sit and watch others do it, you know. Um, and then just to be normal, to be able to go in some place and sign something and not have to ask for help, not have to, to do all of that. I just want normal again, and it, it's been a long time. So for anybody else who's suffering and, and not living their life like they want to, it's certainly worth a try. And that's one of the reasons why I think making this video is really quite important, because I would really like to get this technique out to more people, because uh, there are a significant number of people who are suffering from movement disorders. And it really is debilitating, and there's no reason to, to, to suffer with it. What a blessing to be able to give people back their life, give people back their strength.